All right, so howdy, hello, whoever ends up watching this later. Uh, so if you guys didn't catch the stream yesterday, um, as you guys can see on the screen here, long story short, yesterday uh, the the homie Flamerick uh, came into the chat. We were I was playing a bit of Sam Show with Super Dude, and what the uh, frick? They. Or Flamic brought up this uh, character difficulty tier list, uh, if you will, and we—I mean, of course, it, they even said like it was kind of meant to be more of a silly thing. But at the same time, it started like some genuine discussion uh, between me. Uh, the homies, MCM, Olipop, Sugar Bear, in general, we just ended up talking about this a lot. Because, like, Sam, I mean, Samurai Showdown is uh, not necessarily a difficult game character wise. Uh, a lot of the complexities come from the mechanics and more of a player versus player kind of thing. But this still ended up uh, creating discussion amongst us, just uh, thinking about, like, how how difficult are some of the characters are compared to each other? So this ended up uh, <laughs> with us having a whole bunch of discussion and creating a different revised version of the tier list. Uh, got shared in Discord, started a little bit of even more discussion. So I figured what I'd do today is go through this tier list uh, clarifying things, summarizing things with each character one by one in a hopefully more concise manner. And then if any more discussion comes up, I would uh, make adjustments and we'd talk about it more from there. So before I start, just to clarify some things. Uh, when it came to discussing character difficulty, uh, the best way we were able to sum it up was how hard is it to comprehend and execute their most basic game plan, and how much reward do you get for doing so? Um, this is, or this sort of definition, I think, was the best way to like uh, try to equally gauge the characters in terms of how hard is it to like, if you were to sit someone down and try and summarize how to play the character, and then have them do their best to do the things that. Uh, they, you tell them uh, how far are they getting, basically. Um, and as for the tiers, uh, we <laughs> we messed around with the tier list names a bit, but I, I think these names are okay. Maybe Dive Kick is just the characters with the extremely simple design and/or game plan, uh, very straightforward. Uh, it'll become more apparent as we talk about some of the characters. But the it's Street Fighter y'all tier. Um, these are the characters that I guess to sum it up, it's all pokes and hit confirms or like coin flip mix ups. Basically, a lot of it is the Shotos or it's just uh, general straightforward tools to use. Uh, although, again, it'll, it'll, it'll become apparent as we talk about the characters individually. But in this section. The, the Genjiro to Kiroshiro is, it's like the debatable borderline, where you could argue they might go into the next tier, but we, again, we can talk more about that later. Uh, the low-key anime tier, these are the characters with the weird or unique things to manage, be it uh, their different archetypes, or they have like their own resource management, or tricky things to use. Uh, I feel like that the name was uh, fairly fitting for that sort of tier. And then the pretty sweaty tier, as it implies, it's the complex characters with a very setup or execution heavy game plan. These are the characters that uh, very clearly it, it'll take more than just picking them up and pushing buttons to play them. Uh, and again though, some of these characters may shift up and down. Uh, as I discuss things. Uh, 
when we did this last night, I mean, when I do tier list in general, I did try to order it as best I can. So, for example, the right side is like the end of the tier, uh, bordering onto the tier below it. Uh, the left side is the beginning of the tier, bordering to going up to the next tier. Uh, hopefully that, that makes sense. So, <laughs> from what we did yesterday, we, at the least, I guess we, we started with Darley. Um, <laughs> I need to choose my words carefully, so, because, uh, actually, a disclaimer, this, this isn't, like, necessarily throwing shade at people that main certain characters. One, this is, this is honestly all in good fun, but two, in terms of the actual, like, objective discussion, uh, we did our best to think about the characters as non-biased as possible uh, and evaluating their tools. So with Darley, uh, if you were to sum up this character, I mean, really her goal is just to hit you. Um, she hits like a freaking truck. Uh, she has one of the like shortest and fastest jumps in the game, so a lot of uh, a lot of what Darlies are doing are just jumping at you with, with medium or heavy, which it, it sounds like memes, but it's, it's honestly kind of true because once she hits you, that's it's like a third of your health gone. Um, so it felt fitting to have her in this tier. Warden, on the other hand, is in this tier basically just because of his design, because he actually is the simplest character in the game. He literally has the least amount of moves. He's the shortest move list. Uh, he's kind of like Haomaru, but without being a Shoto. If you look at like his moves, his buttons, a lot of what he's doing is just jumping or poking. Uh, <laughs> so he's literally a simplistic character by design. That's the only, the, the reward is debatable, but that's the only reason he's down here. Uh, is because of his inherent design. And then if we go up the tiers, Charlotte was a character that uh, <laughs> one of the homies, they definitely insisted that Charlotte go down here. But if we're, you know, if those guys are there, then why is Charlotte down here? Charlotte is there because with Charlotte, you just have to do up forward C. I think you're just bitter, Sloopy. <laughs> With all due respect. Well, but we, some of us were really debating whether or not she actually goes down there. Because yes, some of the memes with Charlotte is she's also kind of like Darley. You just jump at people and see if people deal with it. But she also has a very solid Shoto toolkit that I think we would consider fairly valuable. Um, so I think that's why for the time being, we ended up putting her, like, on the borderline of this tier. And then next, Earthquake. Earthquake, he, uh... <laughs> talk about shattering all expectations. Whenever people see this guy, they think that he's, like, the big brawly grappler dude. But he's actually technically one of the zoners of the game. And in terms of, like, his, like, optimal game plan, he really benefits a lot from just hitting his big buttons and jumping away uh depending on the matchup he's hard to anti-air so you really can just press your big buttons and jump around and then if you feel so inclined or if you get your opponent scared you can put in a little bit of mind games with the command grab uh letting loose with the teleporter buzzsaw or two but again all, most of, if not all of his reward is from playing with his big buttons. So, Ukiyo, um, we summed it up as he really is a lot of pokes and hit confirms, but even more than that, in terms of, like, his bigger reward, he, once you sit someone down, teach them how to Tsubame, and then tell them to use uh, 3D or the sweep every now and then, you're, you're set. That's, that's Ukiyo. <laughs> he 
gets a massive reward from his, his coin flips. There's definitely risk to it, but that's a lot of his game plan, because if you're not doing the coin flip mix, uh, you depending on the matchup, you're uh, picking your spacing and doing your pokes and hit confirms. So I think Okio definitely fits in this tier. Haomaru, he's a literal Shoto. Um... Again, most of the time, for matchup-wise, I mean, uh, depending on the situation, you can get, like, a big hit with some of, like, his, his heavies, but he's he's really just Hadouken Shoryuken. Um, <laughs> with, like, an overhead you can use every now and then if you want to catch people off guard. So, I, like, he's definitely in this tier. He's, he's a Shoto. Jubei is the epitome of pokes and hit confirms. Uh, instead of a, a sure you can to work with, he just has a counter, which you actually see a lot less. I, th I assume because of the, the precision required, but a lot of what he does is just the pokes. Um, so there really isn't much to elaborate on there, because and also yeah, f pokes fireball. Can you hit confirm it? Yeah, they're, they're, I'm sorry, there really isn't much to elaborate on with him. But maybe we can talk about him more. Shiki, another... I mean, actually, the funny thing is... Shiki has the high-low mix, but a lot of the times when you hear people talk about this character, it's her pokes and hit confirms. A lot of what you see Shiki's do is they're poking with 5B, uh, Maybe using a quick 6-6-A every now and then. Uh, the, again, like, and if unless you opt to utilize the mix more, it might depend on the kind of player that's playing her, but in terms of her general strengths, she's definitely mostly pokes. Hibiki... Hibiki is also pokes. She, she's got the, the Yuzu Slashes, she's playing a very strong mid-range game. Uh, she also has a counter. Actually, she's very similar to Jubei, but instead of a Fireball, she just has a, a bigger mid-range to work with. Excuse me. With a little bit of trickery with the Command Dash, but you're only using that once you like condition your opponent. So there really isn't much to say from Hibiki either, because she benefits so much from hit confirms. Recoiling against this character is just so dangerous, because she has some of the fastest hit confirms in the game. And this is where we get into that borderline territory that you can debate might be able to go up or down. Uh, the homie Sugar Bear, main uh, Kyoshiro Advocate, we were talking about how he also has a very Shoto-esque toolkit. He's got a ground fireball, long-range pokes, so already a similar toolkit like Jubei. Uh, he doesn't consider the, the anti-air game to be as strong as the traditional Shoto tents, but the tools are definitely still there. Um, and then, us outside of that, what puts him a bit more towards the the debatable borderline is his other tools of uh, not necessarily trickery, but conditioning and knowledge checking more so, because he has the toad command grab. Um, he has the other special moves, like with the flames and whatnot, that depending on the matchup, it may get people scared. But again, the majority of the match, He's, he's poking, um, which fits him considering his big range. Tam Tam is very similar also in that regard, where Tam Tam has a lot of these things for space control. He has a, he has a zoner and honestly anti-zoner toolkit. Uh, skulls, flame pillars, but again, a lot of what you see Tam Tam doing is just poking. And then throwing out an instant overhead every now and then with his jump C. Uh, and the the zoner toolkit, you're you're using it uh, depending on the scenario, really, I guess. But having that toolkit, I think, is what puts him here. 
in the borderline. Yoshitora, the reason he's here is I, I know some people get the impression with him that he's got all these special moves, he's so complicated, but we were talking about how not only is he in some cases like Darley, where he really gets a lot of reward just from hitting you, just getting hit by uh, jump C hurts, um, but a lot of his toolkit is a very diverse toolkit that in some cases lets him be a bit of a bully, and then it's on the opponent to uh, figure out tendencies or knowing how to properly punish things. Uh, but I, I guess the diversity of that toolkit, again, like these other characters, is what puts him in that border. Because uh, if he's not hitting you with, with jump C, uh, he starts doing his his high low game with, with Botan and stuff. Uh, he also has a DP, so he actually kind of has the freedom to play uh, a little more lamer and defensive. You just don't really see it all that often. But I think Yoshitora definitely fits the borderline here. Uh, Genjiro <laughs> is another example where it was debated yesterday that he, Genjiro is known for being very gorilla. Um, honestly, it might be just uh, it might just be trauma from season one. <laughs> but now with the adjustments that he's been given. You can play him like a Shoto, but he does have a bit more to offer. He, uh, again, it it's depends on how you weigh the reward. Cause he, he has the setups with the cards. He has these cross ups to that knowledge check. You, he's command grab. Uh, he also has uh, other hit confirms that. You, you kind of have to know a little bit of things to utilize. So we, we felt he definitely goes on the border here. Because you, you can kind of swing with him, but there there's more to do with him. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so with the next tier, uh, we're going in the low-key low anime tier. Y Yashamaru... We talked about how he actually is pretty simple because he's also another character that's a lot of just poking. And now with his changes, he also has like some good hit confirms. But I guess what sets him apart and puts him on the tier, if not being the border, uh, is he, do he does have the unique aspect of movement. He's doing, he's one of the main characters in this game that's just doing a lot of jumping. But not just jumping forward and pressing buttons. He, he has the double jump. And he has the spear toss out of double jump. He has, well, actually, he has multiple specials out of double jump. And so there's, 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 uh, as Sugar Bear put it, there's wrinkles to, to the, the game plan. But in terms of the base baseline, outside of that, he, he is just pokes. He's got really good range. Uh, Hanzo, I know there was some confusion a bit about Hanzo, but when you look at his tools, a lot of what you see really just is either throw the flame slinky and then go high-low, or you're just doing a lot of hit and run. Uh, and that's part of what makes him really unconventional, because I know some people have, like, thought that he doesn't seem as good because he's not very hit confirm heavy and he's technically the closest thing to a grappler in this game but that's part of what makes him fitting for this tier is he's he's a ninja character with these teleports uh a ground traveling fireball he's he's a character you don't want to get grabbed by quick buttons uh he's another character that there, there's definitely some quirkiness to him Speaking of character tools, they are Wanfu. Um, <laughs> we ended up moving him up to this tier because he is the definition of like the big baller, high risk, high reward character. Because him 
hitting like a truck, but also his game plan uh, involving throwing his own weapon at you, which carries so much risk, but also considerable reward, it makes him very weird. T uh, if you just pick up and play him, it will probably take you a little bit of time to like really utilize the character optimally without just screwing yourself over constantly. Uh, so he definitely felt like he's, he belongs here. Uh, Mina. So, the thing about Mina, we were saying, is that, yes, yeah, she's a stance zoner. So, you gotta have the execution and know-how to go into your stance, stance and shoot arrows really fast. Uh, <laughs> yo, shout-outs to Flunk. Uh, but at the same time, she also is somewhat non-committal in some of her approach. She's pretty quick, has really good buttons. Um, so there's definitely complexity and execution to her, to her, but at the same time, you do get uh, some decent reward from junk man swinging at people. Uh, Mina players can let let us know if you disagree, but I think we we all concluded that she definitely belongs in this tier because again, this is the tier where you have characters that have something weird or unique to manage, and then whether or not they're on the border depends on the general uh, the general simplicity that they have aside from their like unique quirk. Uh, Biken, so Biken's just here by default because in some aspects she really feels like she's copy pasted from Guilty Gear. They integrated her really well into this game, um, but she does have uh, tools that you need to learn to manage. In fact, she well she she has the command dash with the different follow ups. Uh, her buttons are also in some ways unconventional because of the attributes some of them have. Uh, she also has the guard point stance that I don't even see people utilize that much. So there's there's definitely stuff to learn with the character. We could debate whether or not she goes up higher, but she's definitely a minimum low-key anime because she's literally an anime character. Uh, Nakaruru, shoutouts to MCM. Also, we ended up talking about... Uh, Another character you could debate goes higher or lower, but we uh, concluded that she's minimum here because of how her toolkit is structured and how squirrely she can be. Um, she's very fast, very uh, non-committal in terms of like the the button she does and whatnot. Uh, but once you start to learn to properly utilize her specials, uh, knowing when, well, knowing when to intelligently use, like, bird cling and stuff, uh, there's, there is, there are layers to it. Um, how much those layers are compared to other characters, we can talk about more later. Yeah, the, the hit confirming, too. Uh... Cham Cham. <laughs> Cham Cham is another character. In fact, this is why she's next to Nakaruru. Cham Cham is so squirrely. You debatably designed to be annoying <laughs> with her voice lines and uh, how non committal some of her buttons are, her speed. And she has a literal demon flip special, uh, which gives her some of her mix. Uh, so, you could just pick her up and push buttons, but at the same time, there's still things to learn with her. You, you need to learn to do your demon flip, your options to pick out of it, uh, the risk-reward with things. So there's definitely layers to her, too. But she's she's undeniably very squirrely. Basara... Uh... What do we say? Oh, so Basara, he is here. Because, yes, a lot of his reward comes from footsies, from doing his high damage pokes. Uh, but, at the same time, he has a lot of trickery and 
a pretty strong uh, mix-up game that you're missing out on if you don't utilize it. And I think it's it's honestly kind of essential to use to like instill the fear and hesitation into people. So I think we, yeah, the 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 fake jumps. I mean, his his high low is already good in general because of how fast it is. And then once you establish that hesitation, uh, that's when he just like hits you with his chunky five C. And then you're scared to get hit, be be uh, clipped by that, and then he starts mixing you all over again. <laughs> So, he definitely fits here. Uh, Amakusa is actually similar. Uh, but instead of the high damage from his pokes, he just hits you from really far away. He also mixes you from really far away. Um, and he also has a pretty good fireball, too. So, Amakusa... It's, it's kind of similar to Basara, where you can just push the buttons and see what happens, but there's definitely more to utilize. Kazuki, um... Oh, darn, how did... Darn, someone call up Olipop, how do we... <laughs> so with Kazuki, I think the way that we summed it up, it was, especially due to his, like, more recent changes, uh... His, uh... 623 special having the anti-air invul uh his already good to see very strong fireball game uh i'm pretty sure it was established that you can play kazuki like a shoto um but then from there the next layer is properly utilizing the resource management for going in, getting the hit confirms, charging your resources, and then weighing how to use those resources. So, like, naturally he goes here, because he's a resource management character. Uh, and yeah, debatably one of the strongest characters in the game right now. As of, uh, making this video, anyway. And speaking of, like, resource archetypal sort of things, Galford, uh, we were talking about Galford with the way his toolkit is designed, he's honestly well-rounded enough to be played how you want. You, you can rush people down, you can zone, you can be very hit-and-run. Um, but the complexity, uh, which is why he's like on the border here, the complexity comes in him being like an assist character. Where he has these zoning tools, but he also has an assist to call... He has the different poppy choices, d depending on different situations or the different mix he want to run. Um, so you get a lot of your reward from properly utilizing those resources. Uh, so this is where you can debate he could go higher, but he's definitely on the border here. Gong Sung Lee, she is definitely a hit and run character. Uh, she used to feel much more oppressive uh, when she first came out. She got torn toned down a little bit. Um, but her toolkit still definitely requires a bit of learning and getting used to. Uh, because it involves teleports. And uh, it involves setup too. Like her, her SSM, we, we even said before, you're not landing her SSM unless you do like a galaxy brain play. Uh, Every time you set your umbrella, you gotta think about where you're putting it. Um, and then what you can do without the umbrella. Because aside from setting umbrella shenanigans, she really is just zoning. Uh, she, uh, she's another character with a very strong fireball game. Um, so again, another character you could debate go higher or lower. But she's definitely the border here. And so now in this highest tier... Uh, Iroha, so uh, Iroha is a character that ended up uh, having a bit of more discussion, debate, and dis discussion and debate in Discord. But to sum her up, she is a character that's actually more Street Fighter than some of the other characters in this game, uh, which makes her feel very unconventional. She 
can't run. She, she just has the hop dash. Uh, same with her back dash. She does have the double jump, though, which gives her a bit of anime movement. Uh, in terms of her base toolkit, again, you can play her very Shoto-esque. She, she has the fireballs, uh, DP, uh, Tatsu, one of the Tatsus, which is uh, barely minus. So it can be grab punished up close, but Smart Rojas will space it and make people question whether or not to take their turn against her. Um, and then that's where you get into the layer of the the other aspects of her, where she can do a bit of uh, conditioning and aggression. Because uh, she can't really run people down or bully people like that. Uh, but she does have some mix that you can utilize, which has layers to it. Um... So it's the question of what you value and, and what gives her the most reward, because honestly, she's a low damage character in general. Uh, so which uh, which playstyle and toolkit, aspects of her toolkit you value, probably depends on the way you play her. Uh, the comparisons that were made so far from the discussion I've seen was how like I play Iroha, very lame, uh, Shoto-esque, sometimes even hit and run. Uh, versus how Guzman plays her, which uh, Andy OCR summarized as playing her like Cammy, where you, you'll be poking, and then the next moment you're swooping in, uh, overwhelming people with very confusing pressure. Um, so I think it depends on how you play her. So she could be debated to go down, maybe. But she's Umaru. Uh... <laughs> Definitely another, uh, definitely another character that was considered, I'm actually probably still is considered top tier, and in general is considered a very uh, dominating character. He also has a Shoto toolkit, but not only does a lot of his reward come from the more complex aspects of his toolkit. But it also has some of the more demanding execution in the game. Uh, because he has the tap, turn around, punch, you, you hold the button. Uh, which, you hold it long enough, you can just delete somebody. And he actually has scary hit confirms from it. Uh, one of them being a low. Uh, but he also has very strong mix-ups from his uh, float mechanic. Which, again, is demanding execution-wise. So, the things that you utilize with this character... Uh, definitely, you can't just pick up and just do. Again, you could play him like a Shoto, but you're getting much less reward for it. Um, which is part of why he's so strong, because he has all these other wild tools. Rimururu... Uh... She is definitely very squirrely like her sister. Uh, but the reason she's up here is her toolkit is a very... Uh, I mean, she, you could debate she's also designed to be annoying like Cham Cham. But her toolkit, uh, in some aspects, is more space control uh, heavy. But it is undeniable, It's also her game plan is also very setup heavy. Uh, she has some anti-zoning tools, some space control tools, but a lot of what she's doing is getting her hit confirms and then getting in to run her mix, uh, which definitely requires some knowledge and practice, especially depending on the matchups too. So she definitely belongs in this tier. And I'll, I'll hold on. I'll say I'll save the wifey for last. <laughs> uh, so Getsu, um, this man is definitely <laughs> setup heavy. So he, he also has a toolkit that's very much about space control uh, and running mix. Wait, hold on. I'm singing the Sam show. There we go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Lootstairs was also in 
the, the chat yesterday. Uh, Sogetsu, definitely a lot of his game plan centers around... He has some pokes, some hit confirms, but a lot of what he's doing is he's setting the bubble, using his pillars to control space. Uh, and his bubble placement adds, like, a whole bunch of layers to what he can do and what you can do on defense. It... This man's is complicated to play and to deal with, to be honest. Uh, so, Sogetsu, you, I mean, they, they did add anti-air invul to his light pillar, but you're, you're, you really don't get much from just playing him in a show, as a Shoto, because he doesn't even have a fireball, he's, he's the bubble. So, yeah, very, you're playing him very setup heavy, you're using a lot of knowledge with this character. And last, but certainly not least, <laughs> the wifey Wu. Um, and trust me, there's there's no bias with this. She is another character that is also very much about space control, uh, and is also designed to be one of the main zoners in the game. She, uh, you can you can kind of push. Well, actually, you really can't. Just push buttons. You can try to poke. Um, but a lot of what you're doing is you're setting the trap, forcing approaches depending on the matchup, and then it's on you to, to anti-air, counter, or take advantage of fear or hesitation accordingly. Um, and then, as some of you have probably seen in the, the patches, every time she gets buffed, it's to her damage. <laughs> but realistically speaking, you're really only getting the big damage from the the big setups or from lots and lots of conditioning. Um, so she she definitely is up here to where you if you pick her up and play her, you can do the basic zoning, but you definitely have to be uh, aware of what you're doing with the tools, the trap placement, when you're shooting your fireballs, when you're using your anti-air lightning, uh, on all that stuff. So yeah, that that was all the characters, and hopefully I summarized as best as I could everything that we talked about uh, in the previous stream. Uh, so if anyone has any... <laughs> So if anyone has any, like, reasoning or debate as to things they want to be reordered or the character's placement, now's the time to bring it up. So far, off the top of my head, um... Just a second. So far off the top of my head, there's only a handful of characters that I was seeing that I would debatably rearrange. Um, in fact, let me just try to do it now. Uh, probably put Ukio. Here. Mm. I'll put him here. Uh... Biken. Might put Biken over Nako, maybe. Nako is a bit hard to use compared to Nako? What? Uh. Iroha. Um. Oh, wait, well, before that, wait, Cham Cham? Wait, Nako is harder than Cham Cham? Uh... Hmm. So, like I mentioned before, Iroha is someone that was up for debate. Um,
in fact, I feel like I would need to weigh this more off of what other people say because, again, I have a little bit of bias because of how I play Iroha. Um, so, it, again, it depends on whether you, how much you value the uh, pressure and mix that she can do. I might leave Iroha here. Yeah, I think I'll leave Iroha here for now. Not go harder between Cham and Biken? Might put Biken a bit over Cham. Uh, I don't know if you're really swinging as much as Biken. So far, I think I like where we kept the Yeah, like you could debate the order of these ones. For now, this is the order that I like. Um, I guess Basara can maybe say he's here. He's doing the high-low. You're also setting the wisp. You got the fake jumps. Amakusa, it's, you're poking and doing the high-low. <laughs> and then throwing occasional fireball. Um, so I might like this order. See, I don't know if I'm supposed to leave Wu here or not because it's, it would probably come off as biased. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Barbie wants to just leave her there. Is Sogetsu harder than Wu? Wu's not harder than Sog? Because Sog also has a bit of high low. Uh, that's the thing that I've actually realized a while back is that Wu and Sog actually played kind of similarly in terms of space control and then punishing approaches. Sog just has a lot more, a lot less conditioning to do and a lot more mix to run. Uh, I'll put Yoshi. Sorry, I haven't been talking for I don't know how long, but I I think I like where this is. Yeah. Um all right, yeah, I think I will leave it at this. Uh, again, this uh, hopefully all, all the tiers and placements made sense. Hopefully the ordering uh, as best as I could makes sense. And then uh, just be sure to let me know what y'all think. Uh, feel free to discuss, make other suggestions and all that stuff, but hopefully uh, no worries. Hopefully this uh, over-analytical, <laughs> unnecessary discussion uh, will give maybe some context to people that pick up the game later. Or hopefully this was just entertaining to people in general to talk about. I don't know. 
But that's going to be it for me. Uh, thank you. Actually, now that I think about it, is there going to be some bias? <laughs> I mean, I do literally have two college degrees just to play this game. <laughs> I went to college for five years just to simp on the internet for this waifu. So, maybe she does belong at the top just for that reasoning alone. Just saying.